Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. Our story today is titled A Tiny Seed, the story of Wangare Madhai, a Kenyan heroine. It's written by Nicola Reisdijk and published by Bookdash. In a village on the slopes of Mount Kenya in East Africa, a little girl worked in the fields with her mother. Her name was Wangari. Wangari loved being outside. In her family's food garden, she broke up the soil with her machete. She pressed tiny seeds into the warm earth. Her favorite time of day was just after sunset. When it got too dark to see the plants, Wangari knew it was time to go home. She would follow the narrow paths through the fields crossing rivers as she went. Wangari was a clever child and couldn't wait to go to school. But her mother and father wanted her to stay and help them at home. When she was seven years old, her big brother persuaded her parents to let her go to school. She liked to learn. Wangari learned more and more with every book she read. She did so well at school that she was invited to study in the United States of America. Wangari was excited. She wanted to know more about the world. At the American University, Wangari learned many new things. She studied plants and how they grow and she remembered how she grew, playing games with her brothers in the shade of the trees in the beautiful Kenyan forests. The more she learned, the more she realized that she loved the people of Kenya. She wanted them to be happy and free. The more she learned, the more she remembered her African home. When she had finished her studies, she returned to Kenya but her country had changed. Huge farms stretched across the land. Women had no wood to make cooking fires. The people were poor and the children were hungry. Wangari knew what to do. She taught the women how to plant trees from seeds. The women sold the trees and used the money to look after their families. The women were very happy. Wangare had helped them to feel powerful and strong. As time passed, the new trees grew into forests and the rivers started flowing again. Wangare's message spread across Africa. Today, millions of trees have grown from Wangare's seeds. Wangare had worked hard. People all over the world took notice and gave her a famous prize. It is called the Nobel Peace Prize. And she was the first African woman ever to receive it. Hooray for Wangare! Wangare died in 2011, but we can think of her every time we see a beautiful tree. The end. Thank you for reading the story with me. See you next time on Stories with Fleek. Bye! Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. I am so excited that you're here. Our story today is titled Brave Bora and it's written by a Kenyan author called Edna Gishovi, illustrated by 
Ellen Haydenrich, designed by Risa Vauda and published by Bookdash. Bora is sitting at the clinic with Baba. Jojo, his stuffed monkey, came too. Jojo is sleeping in Bora's bag. I don't like needles. They hurt, says Bora. An injection helps make you healthy. It's okay to be scared, Bora. Baba will be right here with you. And Jojo too. Bora Baraka, a loud voice calls. Let's go, Bora, says Baba. It's your turn. Let's come back tomorrow, Baba, says Bora. Remember what Baba said you will get for being brave enough to get your injection? Asks Baba. A red lollipop. Okay, I'm coming, says Bora. The doctor smiles at Bora. Is this your monkey? Can we examine him too? She asks. Bora looks at Baba, then at Jojo, and nods. Now it's your turn, she says. Will you help me give your monkey a small injection so he feels better? Asks the doctor. Choop, says the doctor as she gives Jojo the monkey an injection. Now it's your turn. Is that a superhero on your t-shirt? She asks. Choop, she says as she gives Bora the injection. Ouch, shouts Bora. Hey, that wasn't so bad. I know it stings a little, but we are done. And you have been very brave, says the doctor. One red lollipop for our brave Bora. The end. Being brave doesn't mean that you're no longer scared. It just means that you're not allowing fear to stop you from doing what you need to do. Thank you for reading the story with me. See you next time on Stories with Fleek. Bye! Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. I am so glad that you could join me. So, have you been considerate? I hope you have been. The name of the story today is Foxy Joxy Plays a Trick. And it's written by Nahida Ismail. Designed by Samantha Rice, illustrated by Mdu Ntuli, and published by Bookdash. Foxy Joxy was a sly fox. A sly fox is a fox that plays mean tricks or mean jokes on other animals. Foxy Joxy sold big fresh watermelons at 500 shillings. Your price is too high, said Rabbit Jabbit. You are asking for too much, said Gia Giraffe. Foxy Joxy had a clever idea. <laughs> I don't like the look on Foxy Joxy's face. He looks like he's up to no good. He slit open a big watermelon, scooped out the fruit and gobbled it up. Then he filled it with water. He took a needle and thread and sewed the watermelon back together. That's just awful. 
he sold his watermelons at a cheap price. And many animals bought from Foxy Joxy. This watermelon has only water in it, complained Funky Monkey. Well, you got what you paid for, said Foxy Joxy. We need to teach Foxy Joxy a lesson, said Ellie Elephant. The animals gathered around and came up with a plan. I have an idea, said Oliver Owl. They took an empty watermelon, stuffed Foxy Joxy into it and played a game of football with it. Foxy Joxy was dizzy from all the kicking. He learned his lesson and never cheated again. The end. So, let's not be sly like Foxy Joxy, okay? For more details about this book, see the description down below. Thank you for reading the story with me. See you next time on Stories with Fleet. Bye! Hello children and welcome back to Stories with I am so excited that you could join me. Our story today is titled Hippo Wants to Dance and it's written by Sam Beck Bessinger designed by Marisa Stein illustrated by Megan Andrews and published by Bookdash. Hippo wants to dance. She jumps up and down on the dusty ground. Can you jump up and down like Hippo? Thump! Thump! You're getting dirt on me! Says Shongololo, sleeping in the sand. Go dance somewhere else! Hippo wants to dance. She rolls into the river and splashes her arms and legs. Splish! Splash! Splish! Splash! You're making me wet, says King Fisher, hunting for her breakfast. Go dance somewhere else! Hippo wants to dance. She twirls around and around in a field kicking her legs up high. Can we twirl like Hippo? Swoosh! Swoosh! Are you twirling? Be careful! You nearly kicked me! Says Meerkat, bathing his babies. Go dance somewhere else. Hippo wants to dance. She flops into a puddle of mud and slides around on her nice big belly. Squish! Squash! Can you do that? Why don't you stop dancing? Asks Donkey, carrying his bucket. Why can't you do something useful instead? <sighs> Hippo is sad. She is too sad to dance. She sits on a rock and cries. The tears roll down her cheeks and fall on the ground. She just wanted to dance. Plop, plop. Grasshopper hears Hippo's tears. He starts dancing around her feet. Hop, hop. Hippo and Grasshopper start to dance and the other animals come to look. 
and they dance too. Let's all dance with Hippo. Dance, 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 dance. For more details about this book, see the description down below. Thank you for reading the story with me. See you next time on Stories with Leek. Bye! Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. I am so glad you could join me. Our story today is titled, I Don't Want to Go to Sleep. And it's written by Sarah McGregor, illustrated by Subi Bossa and designed by Alexia Grief and published by Bookdash. Good night, Nandi. I don't want to go to sleep. That's enough now. Good night, Nandi. I don't want to go to sleep. I don't want to go to sleep. I want more supper. Another book. Just one more song. Good night, Nandi. It's time to go to sleep now. Good night, Nandi. I don't want to go to sleep, Mama. I need a glass of water. Please, please. Mama sighed. <sighs> what about an adventure? Do you want an adventure? Yes. Do you want to creep through the jungle on the trail of the fearsome Hippo croco turtle duck. Yes, yes, yes. I want to fly across the sky. Leap from star to star. Fill my pockets with stardust. I want a nandi sized glass submarine to see the creatures at the bottom of the ocean and a pet giant squid to do water ballet there with me. I want to build myself a pair of butterfly wings and zoom to the roof of the sky where I'll see the world and everything in it. Look here, Nandi. Here is your very own adventure boat. It's waiting to take you wherever you want to go. See? Put your head here. That's right. And I'll just tuck you in. There we go. Now off you go. Adventure awaits. Good night, Nandi. The end. Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. I am so excited that you could join me. Our story today is called Lara the Yellow Ladybird and it's written by Martha Evans, illustrated by Catherine Holtzhausen and designed by Nadine Creole. Lara the ladybird was a special bug. And like all her friends, she had bright yellow wings. 
Everyone loved her yellow wings. Each morning, Bibi Butterfly said hello, and Manto Mantis always waved. Even Sessa the Sulky Spider was happy to see her. At school, she played with lots of friends. But Lara wanted to be like the other ladybirds. <laughs> I wish I had red wings like you, Mama. She cried. So one day, to cheer her up, Lara's mother painted her wings bright red. The next morning, nobody greeted Lara on her way to school. And when she got there, none of her friends said hello. Lara sat all alone. No one noticed her new red wings. Until Miss Mia spotted her and said, You've painted your lovely yellow wings. Lara's classmates were shocked. Your wings are special. So unique. So rare. Lara, Miss Mia said, your yellow wings are what make you, you, like Sifo's spot and Sally's legs. Back home, Lara took a long bath and scrubbed until her golden wings gleamed. I'll never paint my wings again, she thought. Except maybe once or twice to try a bit of purple or something nice, but not forever and just for fun. Look how beautiful Lara looks. And she doesn't need to change a thing to fit in because she is perfect. And so are you. The end. Do you want to know something? Just like the yellow ladybird, you are amazing just the way you are. And I hope that you never forget that. Thank you for reading this story with me. See you next time on Stories with Fleek. Bye! Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. I am so glad you could be here today. Our story today is titled, Let's Have an Inside Day. And it's written by Lerato Mbangeni, designed by Rendani Nemakavani and illustrated by Alicia Van Zill. We can't go outside because it's raining. Hmm. I have a great idea. Let's have an inside day. A pancake syrup and berries day. That's a wonderful idea, don't you agree? How about a jump on the bed and twirling day? I dress up like a dad and take pictures day. <laughs> we look so silly. Oh, let's have an inside games day. Do you like the card game? Oh, 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 oh. Let's play hide and seek. I love this game, especially when it's my turn to hide because I'm very good at hiding. Let's run and scream. 
whisper when we pass mama's room because mama doesn't like it when we scream inside the house. Let's have a dancing and singing day! Boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick. Let's have a tickle tummies and eat gummies day! Mm. Do you like tummy tickle? Tummy tickles make me laugh so hard! And gummies are such a wonderful treat! Let's get snuggly and tell stories! This is my favorite part because I love snuggling and I love stories. Let's fall asleep and get snoring because an inside day is a busy day. Who says a rainy day can't turn into an exciting inside day? Thank you for reading the story with me. See you next time on Stories with Flick. Bye! Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. How are you doing? Have you been kind? Have you been helpful to mommy and daddy? Have you been sharing with your friends or your sister or brother? I hope you have been. Today's story is titled Nombunla and the Chili Eating Contest and it's written by Fortune Tazvi Vinger, illustrated by Adrian Foley Notron, and designed by Natalie Walker. Nombunla the hare and Soko the monkey are buddies. They are friends. Hurry, Soko! We don't want to be late for the chili eating contest, says Nomvunla. And the winner gets two tickets to the Humba Humba Fanfare. Isn't that exciting? Nomvunla, if you win, who will you take to the Humba Humba Fanfare? asks Soko. That's easy! says Nomvunla. I'll take my best friend. Hmm. I wonder who Nomvunla's best friend is. Children, who do you think Nomvunla's best friend is? Nomvunla and Soko are the last to arrive. The other animals got there before them. There's the buffalo, the rooster, the gorilla, and the ostrich. And there are rules that need to be followed in the contest. The first rule says, don't say how hot it feels. And the second is, finish all your chilies. Soko, you go first, says Nomvunla. <gasps> Look at leopard. He's just had a bite of the green chili and it is so hot it has made him cry and I think he's about to scream. Nomvunla, I'm scared, says Soko. I'm not, says Nomvunla. How many chilies would you be able to eat, children? All the other animals were not able to follow the rules. Look at their tongues. It's Nomvunla's turn. 
and she has a plan. Numbundla starts to sing. You say it's hot, I say it's not. The judges are surprised and ask her what she is saying. She carries on singing her song. Can you help Numbundla sing her song? You say it's hot, I say it's not. She sings until her chilies are finished. Hooray! Nomvundla is the winner! And she is taking Soko to the fun fair because Soko is Nomvundla's best friend. And look at them having so much fun at the Hamba Hamba fun fair. The end. I certainly would not be able to eat that much chili like Numbundla. Thank you for reading the story with me. See you next time on Stories with Fleek. Bye! Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. So lovely that you could join me today. Our story today is titled Senzo and the Sun and it is written by Sarah McGregor, illustrated by Adri Leroux and designed by Liam Longland. The morning sun creeps over the horizon and peeps through the leaves, waking Senzo. Gogo's rooster shakes his wings, stretches his neck and crows. <coughs> Senzo can crow too. <coughs> can you? The sun is bright and warm. Senzo is ready for school. He takes Gogo's hand. The road is busy. Taxis zip past and toot their horns. Beep, 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 beep. Senzo can toot too. Beep, 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 beep. Can you? The sun is high in the sky. School is over and Senzo's friends play on the grass. They stretch out their arms and run down the hill. Whee! Whee! Senzo can run too. Whee! Whee! Can you? The sun is low on the horizon. The sky is full of color. The long day is nearly over and supper is finished. Gogo and Mama wash the dishes. Splish, splash, splish, splash. Senzo can wash dishes too. Splish, splash, splish, splash. Can you? The sun is dipping under the horizon, casting long shadows, Senzo is washed and full and tired. It's time to sleep, says Mama. She holds Senzo close and rocks. She hushes him. Shh, shh. Senzo can hush too. Can you?
the sun has done her work for the day and she's going to sleep. She pulls a blanket of darkness over herself to keep warm. The sun dreams. Senzo can dream too. Can you? Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleet. How are you feeling? I am super excited that you could join me today. I have a special question for you today. What does being kind mean to you? Does being kind mean sharing with your sister or brother? Does being kind mean giving someone who's having a bad day a big hug? Being kind to me means to be considerate. That's a big word, but I love what it means. To be considerate is to be careful not to hurt someone with what I say or what I do. So when I'm considerate, I am not going to say mean things to my friends or I'm not going to do something that will hurt them, like pushing them or not sharing with them. Today's story is titled The Lost Laugh and it is written by Michelle Prin, designed by Wilna Combrink, illustrated by Karen Lillier and published by Bookdash. Spotty the hyena is very sad. He has lost his laugh. Oof, I would be sad too. Can you imagine not being able to laugh? That would be terribly sad, right? Please help me find my laugh, giraffe. I can't hear a laugh up here. Please help me find my laugh. Hippo? I can't hear a laugh down here. Please, help me find my laugh, Warthog. I can't hear a laugh in here. Please, help me find my laugh, Monkey. How did you lose it? When I laugh, you can see my big teeth. That makes everyone frightened, said Spotty. Then I got sad and my laugh just disappeared. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> but you were looking in the wrong place. Monkey jumped out of the tree and picked up a feather. Then she began to tickle Spotty all over. <laughs> Slowly, Spotty started smiling. And then he let out a big, loud laugh. He laughed and laughed until he was rolling around on the ground. <laughs> All the other animals started laughing too. Where did you find his laugh? They asked. His laugh was inside him all this time. I just made him happy and out it came. They all laughed and laughed so that their teeth showed too. I'll never lose my laugh again, said Spotty the happy hyena. I'm so glad Spotty found his laugh. It was inside him all along. He just needed someone to make him happy. Thank you for reading the story with me. 
See you next time on Stories with Flick. Bye! Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Flick. I am so excited that you could join me. Our story today is titled, Why is Nita Upside Down? Hmm, I wonder why. And it's written by Roxana Bauer, illustrated by Sarah Bauer, and designed by Emma Harden, and published by Book Dash. Nita's hanging upside down, her long hair tickling at the ground. The trees, the grass, the everything is all the wrong way round. Her feet, they poke into the sky. Little Navi is walking by. He says, I've seen you here before. You're upside down again. What for? His feet swim lightly in the air. She tries to hide behind her hair. It's hard to t t talk, she says to him. I'm not the same. I don't fit in. Navi takes her by the hand. He wants to help her understand. They climb to Navi's lookout spot. From up here, they can see a lot. They perch and have a quiet stare at children playing here and there. Can you see them on the tree? The playground is such a fun place to be. There's so much you can do at the playground. You can swing on the swings slide on the slide you can go on the merry-go-round you can use the seesaw and so many other things what's your favorite thing to do at the playground those kids are not the same at all abe is round chi is freckled lala is extra tall Bam Bam is wild and must be free, while Lulu is reading quietly. Look at Freya's crazy hair. And Sid wears glasses everywhere. And me? I am just skin and bone. And you are you. You're not alone. Each human is sort of strange, you see. That makes you just the same, like me. This world is really one big game. To play, we can't all be the same, uh-uh. Nita feels the right way round, thanks to the new friend she has found. Upside down was never fun. Now she plays with everyone. The end. Do you know what makes a rainbow beautiful? It's the many different colors it's made up of. And I think the world is like a rainbow because some people are brown, some are black, some are white, some are yellow, others are tall, some are short, some are round and others are just skin and bone. We all make the world a beautiful place. You make the world a beautiful place. If we all looked the same, the world would be boring, don't you think? 
Thank you for reading the story with me. See you next time on Stories with Fleek. Bye. Hello children and welcome back to Stories with Fleek. So wonderful that you're here. Our story today is titled Tone's Big Drop and it's written by a Kenyan author named Edna Gishovi. It's designed and illustrated by Robin Daly and Musonda Kabwe. One hot day, little Tone sits with the other cloud droplets and looks down from the sky. Everything looks so interesting from way up here in the clouds. The trees look like little soft green balls. The rivers look like silver ribbons. The mountain tops look like ice cream scoops. The buildings look like little gray boxes. Can you see all that? Tone must be so high up in the sky. What else is down there? Tone asks her friend Nunu. My daddy says there are people and animals and trees and cars, says Nunu. Wow! So much to see, says Tone. As the day carries on, their friend Miss Sun rises higher and higher in the sky until Tone and Nunu and the other droplets cannot see her anymore. Mr. Wind comes along whistling a sweet, sweet tune. His whistles blow Tone and Nunu and their droplet friends off their cloud. <laughs> says Tone. It's getting very co 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 cold. Mr. Wind keeps whistling and Tone and Nunu and the other droplets fall onto another cloud. Boop! They bounce off the cloud and then fall far, far towards the earth. Look at me fall, Nunu. I'm going faster than you, says Tone, and she races with Nunu to see who will be the fastest. They fall past clouds and birds and very tall buildings. Down, down, down they go, faster and faster. Look at that, Tone. What is it? says Nunu. Hmm, I see red and orange, yellow and green, blue and purple, says Tone. It looks like a big ball, says Nunu. It looks like a rainbow, says Tone. Down, down, down they fall! Wee! Wee! Swoosh! They slide down the big, bouncy, colorful thing. It's, it's an, an umbrella! umbrella Shout Tone and Nunu. Thank you for reading this story with me. See you next time on Stories with Fleek. Bye!